I'm glad it's night. So the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. Hill's got it. Driven into the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the Bombers are going to go up with it here. Bombers and Rams. Baby, you've been rolling solo. Time to get down with the team. The great Sabrina on that other side. Welcome to the Windy Hill Windstock. With me, The Solution, and joining me today is Fiona. Oh, that's music to my ears. Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock. Does that mean we're yes. back? We're, well, we're back. Well, more specifically, I mean, we were back on Monday, of course, because you listened to the podcast. But uh, this is Fiona's forecast, episode one, second season. And you yep. might remember, so... A couple of people were asking, "How did we? Why did we do this?" This time last year, I think I was frustrated with your yep. shitty mic. Yep. So I, I stole you one from my place of employment. <laughs> yes. Um, a very good one. Yep. And we thought we'll test it, and then we thought we'll we'll give a podcast to Burl, and it sort of morphed into Fiona's forecast. It did. Yeah. It was a. It was supposed to be just a test run of the the sound and um, uh, I think you suggested do you want to just chat footy and then it actually came good it, it, whatever it was you, you listened and it sounded okay well, the when, good. When we say, yeah when we say good you've got to remember our our rating scale is you know shit and under basically the, so, the audio the audio was clear yeah the audio was yeah. clear so that 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 in itself was enough to just put it out right also, everyone could hear your waffle nice and clearly. That was the yes, good bit. of course. Yeah, because I know how much they love listening to me. Not. But, any, um, but anyway, so so here we are a year later, and we're going to go again. So we've got well, we don't have ch ch changes because it's obviously round one. Ch ch team. Uh, well, it'll be the ch ch team. We'll have the sitting Joe and the smoking Joe. We might have the wild card, and then. Uh, I don't know. Have you got a sauna towel? No, I'm not. I'm not going to detail the sauna. Um, no. Okay. Are you retiring that, or just for this week? Uh, I've got a couple of stories. I don't know if they're worthy yet. Oh, right. I might wait till we've got nothing else to talk about later in the season when we start you, going poorly. Do you fear that? Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So your your crystal ball your crystal balling there. Yeah, I <laughs> might save it for for when we need distractions, but. You have received, um, well, more correctly, apologies to listeners who submitted couch questions and they never got answered last year. Fiona admitted she hadn't actually gone in and checked them. Yeah. And you've got a backlog. I did. So I scrolled. I went, uh, instead of starting from the top, because they come in, they come in and then I, I stupidly start from the top instead of where the first one that came in. Um, so the top is the, obviously the most recent. And so what I did instead of uh, clicking on the top one, I just did a big scroll, like a few scrolls of my hands, took me down to the list, and I just clicked on a few random ones. And uh, I uh, I sent you through some of my <laughs> some of my favourite ones. So you, I said you could just hit me with any any that you like. Yeah, there's so we'll do that. Ones. There's a couple of good ones. So getting to the t -t 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 team. So we play Hawthorne on Saturday yep. at the MCG at nearly the old-fashioned time of two o'clock. Can um, you just before we actually move on? I'm gonna with an early. I'm gonna early interject here. Can you explain to me why this is not on Saturday night? Why have I had to turn my life upside down, my work life, because we know it's all about me, to get to the game on Saturday when there's no game being played on Saturday night at the G. Why could they not have made this an evening game? Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know why they haven't checked in with your schedule. I really don't. <laughs> but there is a outrageous evening game. There is, but it's in Geelong. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, and there's Gold Coast as well. Yeah, but Gold no, Coast is in Adelaide for the Foxtel. Pete. Yeah, Pete. but they should have switched. Like, night is best. Hashtag night grand final. I'm on that bandwagon. I'm leaving yeah, that bandwagon. I, I disagree with you on both counts. I prefer the the Saturday fixture. But I'm old school where you used to have six games. Of the 12 teams, you'd have six games all playing at the same time on a Saturday. 
But is that because you like this spectacle of a day game, like in the day? Or is it still, it just yeah. Like, what are you basing your opinion on? It feels traditional. Okay. I like the fact that it's done and dusted and you uh, can still, still have an evening. And okay, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can go out what on the gonna, What are you going to go home and then pour your cup of tea and put your feet up, do you? Yeah, well, I can go out and have a, I can go out in oh, the yeah, okay, I can go yeah, to the nice pub. I can, I can have a nice day. Nice. I, I certainly prefer it to battling with um, Sunday evening, like coming out of Marvel and then realising that I have to trek all the way to Flinders Street, change platforms to get to Flinders Street to get my train back um, and getting home at like 10.30. Yeah, but that's on a Sunday. Like, any game on a Sunday is – and definitely Sunday day game is better than the 4.40. But I'm talking, at, like, of a Saturday night, you got – like, it's just a bigger spectacle for me. It's a more enjoyable spectacle from my point of view of an evening. And I'm, yeah. and I'm personally more relaxed of a night time. Okay, okay. Well, you work anyway. Saturday, so it's very different for you. Yeah, yeah, but I was trying to put that bias aside and I was trying to just get to the point where I think the Saturday evening spectacle is much better anyway and mm-hmm. it creates it like everyone knows that when you go out, you dress up. At, at, of a night time, you dress up more. It's a bit more special in my eyes. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, you, moving on. What, are you wearing a ball gown to, to <laughs> no, any but, game? Is that what you're telling me? I'm talking like when you go out in general. So I just think there's something a bit more grandiose about a night, a night event, night game. Anyway, okay, let's talk team. I don't know. I don't know if our supporters have a lot of grandiose about them, but um, no, they're not showing their, not showing it on Twitter at the moment. They're in friggin' meltdown. So apparently they're in meltdown about the team, which we'll talk about. So firstly, noteworthy that Sam Durham is playing his 50th game. So yep. congratulations to Sam. I think and he's, uh, well, well done, Taz, on your getting him there. I know you had a big, big lot to do with it. So well done, Taz. Yeah, yeah, she's um, she's his number one fan, that's for sure. Oh yeah. And then you look at the new players. Now, firstly, Hawthorne have a new player. Um, <laughs> he used to play Freshenden, who we we spoke on the pod on Sunday. We will be having uh, along with the annual herd of the year and the Henham of the year. We will be awarding the Judas of the Year. Great. Um, eligible players will be Arazio. Well, there's one on, on my screen right yeah. now. McKenna. Who's on your screen? In, 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 the, the first I, one you mentioned. Well, I don't think... And Matthew, I'm, ga- I'm gagging. Can't, aren't you questioning why every time you look at me right now, I'm, I'm gagging a little bit? Is it because of Arazio? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm with you. There was some debate about whether he is a Judas. I, I'm unequivocal. He is a Judas. Debate? By who? That's ridiculous. Um, if anyone, okay, okay. if anyone needs, can I, I'll just put this out, PSA. If anybody needs irrefutable proof or detailing that he is a Judas and not a upstanding member of society, mm-hmm. they can give me a call and I will have a conversation with them. Or I can give them a few numbers of women who will happily take the call. So well, yeah. well, you always bring, you always break stories. Can I, in his defence, does that make him any different from any other? Probably well, many, no. Many, yeah, you're right. Sorry, many, 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 many yeah. other footballers. True, you're right. You're right. However, I will say that he was one that. Oh, will I say this on the pod? No, I better not say Come that. On. I know I can't, I can't, because that might reveal my source a bit too much. Okay. Yeah, I, I will just say that there are reasons I say that, and 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 yes, all the AFL players will have that in common with him. However, there is one thing that sets him apart, and that's oh wow, yeah, okay. in that in this regard. Yeah, anyway, tell me after the pod. Um, but anyway, I, I was just leading to the fact Massimo D'Ambrosio mm. will not be eligible for the Judas of the Year Award. He's not a Judas. Oh, why is that? Well, I don't think we wanted to keep him, did we? No, we did. We offered him a contract. And he actually is quoted, I, I'm not going to say verbatim because I can't quite mm. remember his words, but he said loyalty is very important to me, so it was difficult to leave Essendon. So he chose actively to leave. 
Did he get a better I, offer? Yeah, at all? yeah, absolutely. I think we offered him one. They offered him a few. Okay. Ooh, maybe, maybe. Mm. I and still don't. They promised him, like they promised him a, you know, a spot, a guaranteed spot every week. We had him in the VFL, in and out of the yeah, team, yeah. sub. So you know. Or maybe he's maybe he's on the bench for the Judas team. I, I certainly think he's eligible for a nomination okay. or two. However, okay. I probably wouldn't be giving him a crowd anytime soon when the when the contenders are. What if he? What if he like? Um, yeah. Was it Arazio that did this? What if he kicks a goal and then kisses the badge? Kisses yeah, but, the both. Badge. Uh, yeah, that would give him the Judas of the week. He'd get a vote. He'd get a vote. He'd get the nomination for the week. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, well, That's Judas watches. Okay. Yeah, Judas watches. You, you know what you need to do. The beauty, of, the beauty about this award is Judas watches now expanded from just looking at tweets <laughs> about Joe Danaher. Yeah. <laughs> We can, there is an open field. The the we, bad thing is though, uh, he's going to have a field day. Him and his mate Eamon down there, because all they've got to look out for is Matthew Guelphy, Guelphy. Because for some reason Nick Hind didn't make the cut. I, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure how, but it is round one. So best I just to reserve my say. Okay. Well, let's let's get turn to the Essendon team. Mm. So. I, I think this is, by the way, a big tick to the trades we made because every single trade, every single player who we traded for um, is in the, the best uh, or has made the team. So and I think, not making up numbers. First no, that's right. That's right. Every one of them, maybe maybe Dersma would be maybe last picked, but the other three first picked. Well, Dersma's on the bench. Mm, mm. The others are all in the team. Big Ben's at fullback, of course. Um, Goldstein in the ruck. With um, it's interesting, Sammy Draper, Draper emergency. That to me is a strange one because I would have thought, look, if he's fit to play, he's in our best twenty-two. But I, I guess presumably he's still working his way back to match fitness, as they say. Correct. Quite yeah. So he'll, he'll he's set to play Box Hill on Saturday, which yeah, I believe well, is exciting. Playing at the same time or just after or um, the AFL game. So yeah, it is a strange one to name him as emergency. But I don't know, like what happens, for example, touch touch every bit of wood you have around you mm. uh, solution. But what happens if Goldstein does a tweak in the warm up? So I think you gotta you gotta have a ruckman there just in case. Yeah. Mm. So um. I'm um, uh, I will say on the um, very, I was very, very impressed with Jones's preseason game against Geelong. The best game he's played I've ever seen him play. Yeah, so we needed you on the pod last week because nobody had seen any any oh, of you, the preseason you people, games. You're terrible. You apart, people, apart from <laughs> apart from the architects, you saw like a half. But are you um, outraged? Where's the outrage? See, you, 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 you hone in when I say something negative, but the first positive thing I say about the guy, or the second positive thing. No, no, I was going to say, I, all what I said on the podcast is I didn't see the Geelong game, but Harry Jones appeared in the highlights. Like I watched the highlights and he was prominent um, and by all reports played well. So that's... I mean, Best game I've seen him play. He in that one game, I saw him earn his spot. That I'm, I'm willing to say that I saw him earn. He he showed me exactly what I've been saying. I want to see, or at least glimpses of it. He showed uh, potency in his pressure. He showed urgency in his movement. I've always thought he reads the well. He reads. I've always said he reads the two things. He reads the play really well, and mm. secondly. He's a fantastic teammate, so I'm actually very happy for him to be, at, you know, on cuddle patrol when Gresham kicks his first, if Todd Goldstein kicks his first. Mm. Um, I'm happy for him to be down there and give out all the cuddles because he's a great teammate in that regard. But he showed me glimpses of what I've been wanting to see from him. But now he needs to translate that into an AFL game. Now, whether he's given... The decoy role, like he was um, last year, 
at the start of the year before he went out with injury. He played the decoy role um, and made space for Langford and Stringer. Uh, who knows? He might be. He might. He might be put, brought in the team to keep Sicily occupied. I was going to ask: Was his best work done up the ground by leading and getting on his bike? Yeah. Marking was beautiful, yeah. but his pressure, it's the potency in, in, and his desire to actually pressure and not just take his spot for granted. You mark my words, all those comments Brad Scott is saying, was saying mm. about professional lifestyle, professional attitude, you know, he was saying that it takes one of the most uh, interesting quotes I heard from Brad Scott in the off-season, or actually quite recently, is that it ta- it, it, AFL football is not for everyone. If, yeah. you're wor- if you're worrying about your mates going out on benders every Friday, Saturday nights, then AFL's not for you. And Harry Jones is one who needed to hear that. Amongst others, don't get me wrong, but I feel like something's clicked. Like I did with Draper, I feel like something's clicked. I hope. I'm basing that <laughs> off one day. Well, but... You know, uh, this is a true true story. A mate of ours that grew up, when, when I grew up, one of our mates was very good at football. And this was back in the day of zones, and we happened to be in the Carlton zone. And he was invited down to Carlton to train. And at the time, it was Greg Williams and uh, Reese Jones, I think, David Reese Jones, who I don't know, you, you, you'd know Greg Williams. I've heard, you would have heard of him. Yeah. Yep. David Reese Jones was also a really good player, who's kind of a tallish kind of. Almost like a James Hurd in in he could he could mark the ball so but he would, could blow his feet etc. But he used to just belt people. Oh. So just look up Reese Jones and Greg Williams. Actually, Reese Jones hit Greg Williams and knocked him out once when he was playing for Sydney. It was brilliant. But anyway, my mate was invited down to training, and he missed one training session because he came out with us drinking. Oh. You ruined and his AFL career. He actually said, no, this is the funny thing. He actually said, he, they asked him, why didn't you make training? He said, I was out with my mates. Oh. And, but my mate was good. Honestly, so, honestly. A bit like, you know, the young bloke from Melbourne who keeps getting in trouble but then oh. turned up at round one and looked really good. When you've got talent, um, sometimes you're forgiven things. <laughs> but anyway, one day they're training – and they're outside, they're at Princess Park, but they're, like, in the parkland yeah. doing running or whatever. And we turned up, and we, like, calling, his name was Rob. Rob, we're going to the pub. Rob. No. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> and we're like, come on, we're going to the pub. And he looked, you... at, he looked at Greg Williams, and he followed us into the Oh, truck. you ruined his career. You ru- he came out with us. And, gamer. um... Yeah, now he has a very success, successful trucking business. Was he cut the next day? <laughs> of course he was. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't yeah, of course that. he was. That's outrageous. Yeah. That's outrageous. God, it makes, it, it makes me tear up with laughter every time I hear it. Laughter? About it. Don't you feel guilty? <laughs> no. I feel guilty. But, but anyway. Anyway. anyway um, I just wanted to make that note on old Harry there. So do me proud, Harry, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, so he's named on the bench from memory. Let me check here. Yeah, he's on the bench. Along with Cox, um, Dersma, Guelphy, and uh, Jai. Um, Sammy Draper, as we mentioned, is um, emergency, as is somewhat controversially Nick Hind and Lavert. And it seems to me that a lot of the Twitter talk, from what you were saying, and some of the meltdowns were centred around why is Lavert and Hind out? Or emergencies, and why are Heppel and um, Kelly in? Now, I don't know that Levert, I guess he plays a little bit taller than maybe his height, but I don't know he's done anything spectacular. I think Hines unlucky. From what I saw of the, of the pre-season highlights, he looked pretty good. Well, I'm basing I'm basing it off of more than just the preseason. Laverde was not in good form, as we know. We spoke about. He had it. a mare last year. He had he a mare. Exactly. So then he performs very, very terribly in the preseason games. So 
he is where he should be, and I'm really, really fucking proud of the club for not just selecting him on, you know, his name, not that he's a big name, but, you know, for selecting him just because. Mm. Now it's up to him to go to the VFL and push his way back into the team, push mm. someone out, show show that you belong in the team, show some fight. And, and not do what he did last time he was in the VFL, which That's is, by all reports, have a bit of a sook. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, Hind, the one for me, is not only because he's in great form, but he just gives us something nobody else does. This team is quite slow on paper to me, and he he is every 50-second thing he does is going to be an absolute nightmare, and it's going to lead you probably to two goals to the opposition. But outside of that, he offers something, he breaks lines, and he offers something that... Um, we don't have. He's an expert. He is, and he provides spark, and you know I love his little energy kind of bit of patter feeding. I love that about him. It just it makes no sense to me. When Guelphie had a mare in the preseason games too, I I didn't see that Guelphie did anything last year to earn his, you know, a walk-up spot. So that one confuses me a little bit. I won't hear a bad word against Kelly. Nobody prepares, works harder. Nobody does. Nobody. He absolutely destroyed Charlie Cameron and Isaac Heaney, who are two premier players in the competition. He's got to contend with Ginevan. Uh, he could go on Watson. Like I just Bruce. Yeah. People, people have bi- recency bias. It's not his fault that Brad Scott put him on a wing like, late last year because we out of necessity mm. to try and trial players everywhere and he, he didn't excel, well, yeah, he's never played wing. But I'm sorry, you, you, you won't find a harder-working player and with a harder edge. So I'll die on that hill. Okay, so let's... Anyway, my, my opinion, there's some interesting decisions, but nothing too controversial for me. Okay. Like, I don't think there's anything that sticks out like a sore thumb and you say, why... Mm. Um, but that's just my view. So moving to the sitting Joe and the smoking Joe. Now, just for any new listeners, um, what we try and do is predict who's going to have the best game, or uh, not even necessarily the best game, but who's going to raise their level, maybe above what they normally do, and conversely, who's going to have a shocker and, and be below what, the, what they normally normally provide. Now, I'll go easy on you, Fiona. You can do the Smoking Joe. Thank you. Smoking but... Joe is about, you know, Smoking Joe. Remember who he is? Yep. Sitting Joe was named after Judas. Um, Judas Danaher when he sat on the fence. Who is your Smoking Joe? I'm going to give it to H. Jones. Oh, I love it. Yep. I want to see a carbon copy of what he did. I want to see him turn his defender inside out. Well, can with I just his, say... With his work rate. No, I love it. Um, and to the haters that said that maybe or m- might have indicated Fiona wasn't being balanced in her view of Jones, this disproves what you were saying there because... Absolutely. I only comment on what I see. People think it's harsh, but I will say... I know a little bit about football, and also I have an ear to the ground. So combine the two, mm. and I think I'm pretty a lot of the time. I'm wrong, obviously, a lot of the time, but I'm obviously right a lot of the time too. And I, I, I stand by every single thing I said about Jones. And anybody who thinks that you didn't see a different Jones two weeks ago is not watching footy that much because it was a di- a noticeable difference. Well, I'm always wrong. So make me proud, I, Harry. Yeah, I'm always wrong, but I, I think he's got talent. Um, we just need to see it. Yeah. And it's very important for that class. What is the class of 2022? Was Jones in the same draft? As, no, Jones is in the same draft as Cox. That's the next draft, I yeah? I think he was, wasn't he? Wasn't he just later? A later pick? Oh, was he really? Oh, God. They all seem to... Hang on. I should check this. They all seem to merge into one. I am super keen. We should give some some love to Reed, Zach Reed. Every week we're gonna we're gonna shout him out. 
yeah. and we're gonna we're gonna say praise and say a prayer to the unit footy gods and the universe for keeping him safe and healthy it's required we have to take a moment silence every week because no one is more important to the growth of this team than he he looked good he looked good he looked beautiful he looked beautiful okay right. i need to give a, i need to give a sitting joe don't i yeah who you got oh. I'm hoping this sitting Joe that I send to this person becomes a Moz and, in fact, the opposite. A bit like when I bet on a horse and I want it to win and it never does. Mm. I'm betting on this person to put in a stinker and I'm hoping it guarantees they have a great game. Nick Cox. Oh, okay. Just even seeing him on the bench worries me a little bit. Because what do you mean? Why do you? Can I ask you why you wrote, wrote, read into bench versus on the field so much? I don't even take notice. I'll tell you why. On the field. No, on this in this specific instance, I'll tell you why. Because I worry they're going to use him as a pinch hitting, maybe coming on the wing, maybe slightly half forward, maybe slightly half back. Where is he going to play? Well, let me put your mind at rest. That's exactly where they're, what they're going to do. Well, that doesn't put my mind at rest. Because well, you I, said I, you're worried they're going to do that, and I'm saying I'm putting your mind at rest, and well, I'm saying don't worry yeah, anymore. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. Well, what I wanted to see, well, and, and it still may happen, because, it, of course, you, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're right in, in your basic premise. After five minutes, they could he could be on the field and staying in the one position. I was hoping maybe with uh, particularly um, the outs that maybe they just keep him down in the back line and just say run at the ball, focus on your man. And I think he did a couple of good things last year in defence. In the VFL as well, I saw him in play, play a game down there and looked okay. Um, and so that's what I'm, I was kind of hoping they'd do. I hope they, hoping they'd give him one role. So this is your job. No, I, I don't know how smart he is, like above the shoulders. And sometimes, let's, let's face it, he's a footballer. So, you know, he hasn't given up a promising career in neuroscience to, to be there. Hopefully, just give him two, three things to focus on. Because I reckon he's got oodles of talent. You don't play some of those early games he played in his first season and do some of the things he did kicking both feet, reading the play, um, finding space. They're, they're things that you can't necessarily teach. Mm. So he's got some God-given talents. I just I hope he's not confused, is my point. Oh, I, I'm under absolutely no doubt that he's confused. I think he's, <laughs> sho I think he's, <laughs> I think he's shown that he probably doesn't have the capacity whether it's mind, body, telling body what to do to play this roving, play me anywhere role, I think yeah. I, I would have I would have been more than happy for him to play the Rids role. Take, give him the challenge. Say, use your skills. We're backing you in. These are your A, B, and C things to work on. He have Ridley. Ridley could stand there next to him pre-game and coach him. Um, I would have been happy for them to give him that role and settle him down there and just give him a bit of a challenge. Um, some would say that, you know, well, you're taking a weapon away from the wing, though. Well, I think we've got, <laughs> we've got weapons on the wing, though. Dursma, Durham, Martin, you know, and so they're saying that they're going to rotate, they're going to rotate them all through the back line and through the wing, half, well, half forward, with Cox. So, yeah. But I, I would have been happy for him for some mental relief. Because think about, so which team meeting is he going to? He has to be he has to be across every team meeting because he doesn't have one spot. He has to hold the, the play for every team line in his head. That's a lot for a young player. Yeah. I, I, and some, let's, let, I mean, look, there's early developers and then some players are late bloomers and, we, and we're very quick to, to write people off. I mean, maybe... I'm not writing them off. I just think that... I think he deserves the right to just... Have. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous, yeah. But, but maybe it could be circumstantial too. I mean, 
what they've got. Hawthorne have Mitch Lewis, who's a big guy. Their forward line is their most potent line. Their back line, they're screwed, absolutely screwed. Yeah. The key to have... beating them, the key to beating them is to pressure them. That's it. Because without the, with when they lose the ball, they 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 are not good at getting it back. So if we can just pressure them and keep it in mm. our forward line. I start aside from Sicily, they are very, very weak down there. But they're not tall either, either. Like, if you look at L- Lewis, and then you've got Hardwick and Ginevan named either side of him. So there's no tall... I guess, there's no monster. Guy. Yeah, there's no two-metre yeah. Peter, yeah. Actually, I, I have seen a bit of... I'm, I'm a A, a plus A1 two-metre Peter um, fan, as we all know. Um mm. But I have seen a bit of heat coming his way. I'm not sure. I haven't decided if, if I think that's fair yet. Uh, my gut is telling me it's not fair and that it's more got to do with the delivery to him. Um, mm. Basing this off the last half of last year and his pre-season games. Um, but, yeah. What's your view on him? I'm not... <sighs> Yeah, I, I'm not. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not going to m- make any judgments until we're five rounds in. On him or in general? Yeah, yeah on him. Just okay. like just like big yeah. guys, big guys need time in their careers to develop. So a 24, 25 year old tall player might be two years away from even showing near his best. Whereas a, if you're a midfielder, you better be good at twenty two. Um, yeah, I, I reckon think, 27, 28, he'll hit his peak. Yeah, and I think similarly, even in a season, big guys sometimes mm-hmm. need time, particularly like right with his, I don't know how fit he was at any point last year. Um, you know, you don't lose that talent. I mean, we saw it two years ago. You do, you do not lose that. A little bit like what I was saying with Nick Cox. Once you've seen a guy ceiling, you know how good he can be. Mm. Um, I think with right, it's a confidence thing. Yeah, and I agree. It's you know it's a confidence thing when he's you know when he's taking the half marks. That's yeah, not skill. that's not yep. skill. That's confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Half marks means he's got the mark and something clicks in his head. The little little gremlin on his shoulder goes boo and he drops it. That's all confidence. Agreed. Yeah, but anyway, so that's the sitting Joe and smoking Joe. Anything else about the game? God, we can talk for a long time, can't we? Well, it's around. It's, this is the first step. <laughs> so preface. We should have prefaced that this is going to be a long one. Come on. Yeah, surely, true. surely yeah. people won't mind. They've been without, or, or they might mind. They might have enjoyed the break from this. No. Uh, well, if they didn't enjoy it, they would have switched off by now. So this we can just grab it on as long as we want. This um, is true. Any other thoughts on the? Players, well, we'll get the final score prediction at the end. Uh, the players, no, look, I'm a little, um, I will say the one thing I, I took, you want to know the thing I took the most from the preseason games? What? Is the importance and the absolute imperativeness that Will Setterfield stay on the park this year. He was so, like, Without being prolific, you know, in terms of his touches mm. and, and his own statistics, the way he mama bared Parrish and Merritt, it was just a sight to behold. He was like a mama bear protecting her baby bear. Albeit Parrish Someone's did... Someone's been sleeping in my bed. Yeah. Albeit it, to the point where Parrish actually uh, shepherded him. Absolutely. <laughs> Because he was he was shepherding the Hawthorne, I mean the Geelong player from getting to Parish, mm. and Parish didn't realise and shepherded him with one hand, <laughs> used him to chew him away, not realising it was him. But no, I, I, it was very very obvious to me how important it is to have someone there acting as that uh, mama bear to merit and to the good ball users and to the you know uh, to start the chain. And to have that bigger body in the middle. So I think you're right. That- I, just, just, just um, slide aside too. What's your opinion on the value that Goldstein is going to bring? So in the pod, mm-hmm. there'll be a handy acquisition. 
Jez jumped down my throat and said, well, I don't think he's going to be a star. And I said, well, I didn't say he's going to be a star, but I think he'll be, <laughs> you, <laughs> I think he'll be handy. What do you... Oh, I think he'll be fantastic. I think he's, yeah, speaking of work, right, he'll work until he bleeds. He'll run and he'll 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 tap. He'll be incredible for the um, for the midfielders. Um, I, I don't think we should put too much pressure on it yet because the chemistry still needs to build in that department. Um, that goes for any of the recruits. We have to give a bit of gear. You know, people don't like to hear patience, but unfortunately, mm. this is logical. There is a logical element to this. Can I touch? I agree with you. Can I touch on the word patience? Sure can. So there's a lot of talk. Obviously, I think so. I'm going to mute that fucking word on Twitter. I'm, I've heard enough. <laughs> you know where I'm going, yeah? So Scott yeah. Scott gave a fairly in-depth and considered interview, which I kind of skimmed over. But the sense I got was what he was saying is he's not, he's not here just for short-term to, to – to get like a short term fix, jot in the arm, short term fix, um, you know, take a little bit of ice and and party for three days, only to um, go home and stab your family. <laughs> We're not interested in that. <laughs> what we, what he wants to build is sustainable success. And then the headline was about, well, Scott has an eight-year plan. Oh, my God. And then the responses, <laughs> which were along the lines of, hey, um, oh, fuck this. We've been waiting all these years. We don't have eight years to wait. Yeah. I need success now. We don't accept this. We've got standards, blah, blah, blah. Look, can I, just, just for anybody who's new here that doesn't know how this shit works, this is not like the mid-2000s in the Premier League where Saudi Arabia or, sorry, uh, United Arab Emirates can come in, buy Man City, buy all the best players and buy success. This is AFL football. We have a draft. This list has legacy issues. This club has legacy problems that need to be worked through. They go right from the from recruitment all the way up to the way coterie groups operate, the way the administration has operated. Um, you know, there is a lot wrong with this club that needs fixing. Just because you want instant success, <laughs> guess what, buddy? You're not going to get it. As Brad Scott, no one, no one is owed anything in AFL football. You are owed it, the absolute audacity for some supporters to think that they're owed who is holding a gun to your head and making you buy your, your membership every year? Is there someone? Tell me, because I will make a phone call to the authorities. If someone from the Essendon Football Club is holding a gun to your head and, and, and making you buy your membership, you are and owed listener, nothing. Listeners, Fiona has southern Italian roots. She can make <laughs> phone calls. Exactly. Um, I have connections, okay? But so, I, I, I will help you if that's what's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, but, but there's lots of things I want in life. Yeah. I wanted to win that $90 million Powerball. Yeah. Guess what? I didn't do it. The so, audacity to think you're owed something from... Or, or, or the, just that there's an easy fix. Like, and just because you, know, you, like, put up or shut up now, you can't put the failings of 20 years ago on this right. new group of recruits and players. Thank you. They don't, they don't hold the history and the or failings this. of... Of the Afo, what you said, the aforementioned groups. All you this, have to yeah. give them, or the, all, all Brad Scott for that. That's right, exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. Mm. Brad you Scott. Cannot, yeah. You cannot, for once, Brad Scott, you know, someone's come in and is actually saying the hard truths, you know, but nobody wants to hear them. Yep. And, and, and I find it so fantastic and refreshing. And this is why. I'm prepared to ride what I think will be a very rocky year because we, mm -hmm. we went through the draw um, mm -hmm. during our podcast and I think we're going to turn at the bye with a negative record easily. Um, but I'm, pre I'm prepared to ride this out because he's a guy who's not worried about keeping his job. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think Brad Scott is playing to – he's coaching to not get sacked. No. Or to, to get sneak into the eight 
he's talking about building a, a successful club that's sustainably successful and it probably will take eight years because by the time you draft well, mm. it's going to take that amount of time for those players to come to fruition anyway and, and, and meet their... I'm not sure of the IQ of the average Essen supporter, but it's like it, it's not that hard to find evidence to back up everything he's saying because no, he did this no. at North. He t- and, and he had a worse list. And he took them to prelims. And he had a worse list. But he didn't walk in the door and then and after two years because the because the membership stamped their feet and said, I deserve success. Like I deserve a final yeah, yeah, yeah. win. Yeah. Fuck you, you deserve nothing. Well but what you know what? If you hang around and wait and I will say, and I'm sorry, this might be slightly contradictory, I'm not dismissing anyone's pain at the last 20 odd years. I, we, I know we've, we've all been in the trenches. We we've been bloody together. podcasting this whole time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what it's like dialing in for a podcast on Sunday night to talk about a team that's been shit. Not just shit, but embarrassed the living day out of it. Made you, made you embarrassed to be a supporter. Like we have been, we feel the pain. I, we want as much. You don't, you don't bleed any more than we do. Yep. But. I, I just feel like there has to be a little bit of logic to it. Mm, I agree. I agree. A bit of logic, a bit of balance. And also, by the way, don't just read the headline mm. and and start ranting without actually reading the article. Because I think if most people read the article, yeah. they'd say, okay, well, actually, I agree with everything. He was completely taken out of context. Yeah. He was yeah. more talking about the group of core players being at this perfect age, Mackay. You've got your spine, perfect age, Mackay up one end, two-metre Peter down the other end, yep. Draper in the middle, all in the perfect age demographic. That's what he was talking about. And then mm. adding your, your Cox, your Reed, and your Perkins, who were all going to play for eight years together that's yeah. what he meant not it's we're going to win a premiership in eight years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like it's just sensationalist rubbish honestly <laughs> correct but we digress yes yeah, should we go to the couch before we give the no where's the wild card oh have you got a wild card no you you, you provide the wild card do i you, have right. you forgotten yeah i've forgotten about if the you wanted me to do it, you should have told me to uh prepare I don't prepare anything. No, so you I'm don't. Gonna make, so I'm gonna you make usually, you're usually pretty good with your memory. I have to. I will give you that. So I'm surprised you've forgotten. I'm going to make it up right now. I think the wild card will be. You usually you usually resort to the weather, so you could go with that because <laughs> it is going to be hot. It's going to be thirty, which I'm not looking forward to. I don't like the heat. Yeah, it is going to be a hot. <clears throat> Excuse and me, my my one. seats are my seats are sun facing at the G, so sunstroke. I will sunstroke. be I will be making friends with you come Saturday afternoon. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think the heat is to blame. I, I think the wild card is actually I'm going to say it is two meter Peter, and our our ability to um, get marks inside fifty. Whether that happens or not could. I, I, I reckon we look a bit um, we look a bit tall down the down back, and as per as per in the forward line, I do think we look a little bit like like Harry Jones doesn't crash packs and take pack marks. Um. Other than two meter, who's gonna who's gonna actually like take take a contested mark? Well, Langford is good on the mark. He's a Langford's good, mark. good one, great one on one, mm. and he's a great lead. We've got a lot of lead up forwards. So, We've what's your wild card question? Sorry. My, my, so, my wild card is just can two meter Pete. Two meter Peter is kind of dovetailing into the conversation we had earlier about the sort of two meter we're going to get. Yeah. What two meter Peter we get round one 
will determine whether we have a really hairy, ugly game where maybe we get over the line or maybe even like Winsock 2000 predicted it as a danger game or we have a comfortable 40-point win and actually look a lot better than Hawthorne. So it's like he's the wild card. But the wild card is a question. What? <laughs> what do you mean? You usually provide me with a question. Oh, wow. You're going to have to cut this part The wild card out. is like the weather or the umpire. Yeah, but you always pose it, it as a thing. question. Yeah, but you always pose it as a, it's a wild card question. Do I? Yes. You need to go, A, you need to go and re-listen, and B, you need to prepare. <laughs> No, I, th- I think a wild card is, is, is really just the thing that could well, then, make well, then, or break the game. Well, then you've been naming it wrong for all of last year. No, well, they're normally external things. They're not players. They're normally like umpires. They're, they're like... Um, but it's always in the form of a question anyway. You need to, if you need to, cut, you need to cut this bit out. I'm not cutting shit. This that, is right. Ra- this is... This is I, I, rubbish. I, I, I've resolved to, to do two things in podcasting land this year. Because you know what, one of the things I've noticed is no matter what we do, we get the same amount of listens every every uh, every week. Although we did start to blow up with when we got on the podcast back on the podcast apps last last year. But two things I'm doing: one, I'm drinking wine on every podcast. I've made that as a promise. Yeah. Uh, in, in the last podcast, that's a that's a resolution I can keep. <laughs> um, and B, I'm doing zero editing. I'm not editing shit. You didn't um, do any editing last year, to be fair. True. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So this is a, that's, a carry on, that's a carry-on. That's uh, a yeah. carry-on carry-on promise, is it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So anyway. well, well, then, well, then you you must vow for next week's Fiona's forecast to do better and to do some to, to do some homework on the on the wild card question. Oh, sorry, I've got three three promises. I'm never doing homework. <laughs> <laughs> never have, never will. All right, moving on. Mm-hmm. Um, before we get to the prediction, I've got some interesting questions here. What should I Wait, pick? predictions first. We always end. Oh, this is a shock. Okay, model. if you want to know this, this, this is a disaster, listeners. <laughs> we clearly, it's, but look, it's, we haven't done a Fiona's forecast for what? Six, uh, five months, four months. We're a months. bit rusty. This is, this is. Amateur at best. I mean, we are amateurs. Is it amateur the in a shamozzle? Is that what you're going to say? In a shit taco or something like that. I don't know. We can um, do prediction first. Go. But the prediction's always first. This is what I'm saying. What are you drinking? What is spiked in this wine that you're having tonight? <laughs> I don't know that it's that material to the output of the um, podcast or the quality, but, but what's your prediction? Go. Uh, my prediction is 42 points, Bombers. Mm. I'm a bit rattled You're not gonna by our points. pre-season. No, you, not, that you didn't watch. <laughs> no, yeah, but even the, even the seeing that, <laughs> I tell you what, I didn't have to watch the game. Just watch. How, can you, how is watch, one rattled by something they did not see? Watch watching Twitter against the St Kilda game, and I said I said this again on the podcast um, earlier this week as well. The classic preseason Essendon arc happened exactly to the letter of the playbook. It was win trade week. <laughs> Get really excited over preseason. <laughs> lots of talk, lots of videos of how good we looked playing each other, playing <laughs> ourselves. And then come the first preseason, everyone's hopes are up. They're all going down to Godforsaken Seaford or whatever it is. Yeah. Risking getting stabbed and coming back to their car with with it being up on blocks, only to see us get slaughtered. And watching the commentary of on Twitter was just so funny. Uh, so, but I'm a, I'm a little bit rattled by how poor we were. And I know we we looked okay against Geelong, and they probably should have, you know, on the scoreboard, battered us a bit more because they missed some shots. But I'm going less than 13 points. And I don't think we'll quite streak away like we we should. should. I will say this. If we, if we can't cover the likes of Darcy Parrish and Draper against this Hawthorne team, and 
by no means am I sleeping on Hawthorne because I think they've throughout this year they're going to beat some teams they shouldn't and they're going to lose to teams that they probably should. But so I'm not sleeping on Hawthorne, but I think if and again, this is not going against anything Brad Scott has said about patience, but I think if if we need to show some uh, seriousness, we need to be because there's just one there's just one way forward against this team, this Hawks team. It is undermanned, and it's very clear their strengths and their weaknesses are very clear. The, mm. the way to beat them is to pressure them out of their confident kicking and their handball, 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 run and carry. Their backs and their mids have uh, the license to run and carry, and they're confident when they do it. But when they're pressured, they really struggle on turnover to get it back. So if you can pressure it into your forward line and yep. keep that, you know, from the centre bounce, you know, Redmond and uh, Pally and Hips just, you know, winging at that centre, at the centre, halfway halfway through the on the field, just hanging back there and rebounding everything that they try and get out. It'll it's a very easy way, not easy, but it's an easy plan to beat the Hawks. So I think that's a long-winded way of saying if we're if we're serious about improvement, big or small this year, we need to be beating this Hawthorne team. Yeah. If we don't, can you imagine the meltdown? Yeah, I'll have a. I think I'm going to preface and say I'll have a bit of internal meltdown. I'll definitely think that there's nothing Brad Scott can say to make me feel better. Definitely, if we don't, I'm not. I'm not. I won't throw the cot, the toys out of the cot. I won't pull the, the baby season. out with the bathwater. Yeah, I won't. I won't call the season. I won't declare it a failed season. I won't say we're not going to win, make finals because of it, but I, I definitely will maybe readjust my expectations. Yeah, my expectations are low, but even those low expectations will be rattled if we, if we yeah. lose the Hawthorne. Only because they're incredibly undermanned in their back line. Yeah. And on paper, we have weapons down there. Two meter Peter is a weapon. Langford is a weapon. Stringer is a weapon. Now Gresham is a weapon. So by rights, mm. but again, that falls on the mid, mids getting it in there, mids and backs getting it into the forward line. All right. So you've you've gone with forty two points. I have. I've gone with thirteen. Whoever's yeah. closest yeah. gets a point. Yeah. So at the end of the year, we'll, we'll work out who was the supreme predictor. Which you've, you know, you um, you clearly won last year by a very long way. You absolutely nailed the predictions. I was Nostra fucking Damas last yeah, year. Yeah, you were. Um, yep. So, uh, yeah. We'll I was good on the smoking. Was it the smoking or the sitting Joes? You were good, good on, on both Joes. You were you you had Joes down pat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I I didn't do well on Joes, but I, I did, definitely did well on um. Yeah, you were. On the tips. Yeah, you didn't drop many. You did not but drop My natural many. pessimism fed into our poor end of the year. That's true. Anyway. All right. The owner's couch. Should we do one? Let's go. Hit me so, with one. To all the listeners out there, what we like to do... Um, Final toward segment. The, towards the end of the podcast, just before we give you know our tips for the for who's going to win the game, we would... <laughs> You're a shithead. This we, is the final segment. We close the podcast off. I don't know, man. I'll have to go back and check. Please anyway, do. We, what we do is a non-football, we have a Fiona's couch, which is Fiona's shown a real propensity to be able to give advice to people. And so um, what we ask people to do is submit their questions. And uh, you've done it. Your backlog came from, what's the um, what's the app called again? Oh, NGL. So stands for obviously not going to lie. Not going to lie. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to repost the link as well. Yeah, but, yeah. Not that we there is a well, backlog, can, but any any new ones appreciate it. Yeah, but yeah. You can always just direct message me on Twitter and yeah, just, exactly. just at the front of the message say it's um uh question for the couch. But I'm going to go with so you give me a few to go. I'm going to go with this one here. You ready? Hit me. I think I have a ghost following me. What do I do? Now, you know the worst bit? This person might have sent this two years ago. 
and you've ignored them. They're, they're feeling for their mortal um, existence. <laughs> Shit, I was and dying. You've just, and you've just like, you know, they were hoping to, to, to have the problem solved and they've been waiting. So. Whoever said that, I've had a very stressful week and that just cheered me up so much. I was, I was in tears. I don't know why, but that just made me laugh a lot. Um, my first instinct that just hit me was to say, uh, have you, do you have any sage? The first thing I would do is I'd, I'd get out my, like, bucket. That's not the first instinct. That, you know what my first in, instinct was? Oh, no. What? Do you, do you have a history of schizophrenia in your family? <laughs> is the ghost talking to you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no. Um, so, I, I, look, I'd love to know. If you're happy to, you can stay anonymous. That's why the NGL app is good, because you're anonymous. I don't see who, who sends the messages, so you can stay completely anonymous. I would love for you to just give me a follow-up. I, I want to know who the go who do you think is the ghost taking on a person? Like, is it a family member or is it just a, a, a you know, a white sheet that you feel like it's following you around? Um so, yeah, look, I would get out all the uh, buckets of sage and just light it on fire, light the buckets what, what on fire. What does sage do? Sage is very cleansing. It notoriously uh, uh, cleanses your environment and spiritually speaking, it clears any heavy energies, any uh, uh, heaviness, any um, spirits that are hanging on to your environment so typically when you move into a new home you should do this you should you should get somebody to come in and sage or you should sage it yourself um just to clear out any you know heaviness that was left behind from other people who live there's energies that's creeped into the walls or the corners and you you go behind the corners behind your bed under your bed where where energy can lie and um can get stuck um because from a more, you know, in a, on a more serious note, if you feel like it's a, it's an energy that's a heaviness that's following you, and um, that not not so much a white sheet that's following you around, but like an energy, um, I would, if you haven't, I would delve into meditation, um, and I would just ask whichever higher spirit or self that you, whether it's God, whether it's whoever you believe in whatever high spirit that you believe mm. in if there is one um i would just ask for some you're smoking at me like you're I'm, like no, I'm no, talking, no, I'm not, I'm like not. i'm talking absolute crap honestly i was looking at the time and thinking this podcast is like we we, we could talk underwater for hours you and me um, that's what a podcast is correct uh, I, I wanted to ask you so, so you obviously believe in believe in ghosts um, no, I believe in energy. Absolutely, I believe in energy. I don't. I don't believe that there's a, a ghost standing on my bed that I'm going to see my mm. grandfather. Don't believe in that. But I absolutely believe in energies. Absolutely, without fail. It it, it proves me right time and time again. I can walk into a room without fail. And, mm. So I'll go to a party or an event. And then the friend of the the friend of the event will call me the next day to chat, and I'll say I'll tell her this person, that person I met, that person I met, that person I met was really a bit weird and a bit off, and I could tell that. And she's like, "How are you even knowing this? There were a hundred people there. I can tell because I can feel it. I can feel mm. everybody has an energy. Everybody is made up of a." Whether you, some people will call it body language, reading people's body language or their attitude or things they say. I call it reading the energy. It's it's a it's like a stink that people give off. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm kind of agnostic. I'm not I'm not sure. I reckon ninety nine point nine 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 percent of stories are bullshit. But it only takes one story to be true. And then, well, what story then about somebody seeing a ghost? Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. oh, yeah. I see. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe this person, this person said ghost. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say they think they think that there's a ghost following them. I would. Okay, step one: get your sage out and just and sage your home, your living mm. space. Uh, step two: 
I would Google a meditation for clearing energy and I would do that meditation every night for, let's say, a week, specifically asking the, in your case, ghost or energy to leave your space. Um, Because some people believe that, like, a series of bad luck, putting it down to a ghost who has been, like, that they just can't, it okay, can't so be a coincidence. Yeah. yeah, like it just okay. to the point where it can't be a coincidence. And I, don't, I personally don't believe in coincidences. So, um, and the third step would be to acknowledge the third, my third result would be acknowledge the ghost, acknowledge its presence, because sometimes the energy or the ghost or the spirit, whatever you believe in, just wants to be seen so it can leave. Okay. And fourthly, so, sorry. It's taken for only like eight months or Oh my god! If crash. you're in asylum, you, 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 you in your crisis time. If crisis. you're in an asylum because you couldn't, I couldn't help you with this ghost. I'm so fucking sorry. I I I, I can only say that I run a business and I have a life and not no I have a life. That sounds bad. I mean like with every, I don't have much spare time to just peruse that. But I'm so sorry and feel free to message again if you need some more advice on the ghost but i'm sorry and i hope i hope it's a friendly ghost has this person hasn't slept for six months but anyway that's okay oh, damn. um thanks all right well on that note that wraps up uh week one of fiona's forecasts forecast season two oh, just just a little bit of housekeeping so remember we did that intro new intro oh my day. god the intro yeah so we've got the intro i can't find the outro Oh my god! Anyway, just say you couldn't find the intro. I was about to have a, I was about to have a heart attack. No, no, no. Oh. So, so listeners, obviously, if they've listened to this, they would have heard the intro. Oh my Can't god. find the outro, but I might even, if I can find it, make a new one. Well, yeah, yeah, but because it wasn't I wanna, great. I want to put this. Oh, great. Okay, so I me seven hours. Maybe it's no, um, maybe it's because I'm comparing it to the intro, which is like elite. What? What I might do is put up an old song of the week. In fact, I'm thinking if I can find it, it, just in keeping to the game coming up, I might. I did do a song about Essendon and Hawthorne at the MCG, which was to, um, what's that song, I Do All the Dumb Things? I don't know any of your obscure songs. I, I Do All the Dumb songs. Things by... Um, you Paul use Kelly. all these obscure songs. You need to You need to up update your uh, repertoire I, okay. I will say that just okay. we need to we need to attract some younger younger listeners, younger listeners. And, okay I'm, yeah, I'm not, yeah that'll not... work. <laughs> my, my songs will do it um anyway to to um i do all the dumb things by Paul, Ke- Paul kelly i wrote a song called i caved brad Sewell's face in which is oh. about maddie maddie lloyd and his um Many moons ago. Running off the line. Yes, right. So I, that I should give you an idea of how long we've been. You've been doing this in pain. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So anyway, that's um, I'll put that at the end. But yeah, thanks to everyone that listened. Um, something about cake is the sponsor again. After some heavy commercial discussions, um, Fiona's offered to. What's what's the code they use when they're um. Winsock. When you're ordering, just use the, use the code Winsock. Winsock. When you order online, and you'll yep. get extra, or, or anything you order will be will come with an extra pinch of love, um, and maybe some additional goodies. Possibly. Thank you again to all the people who ordered through the through the pod last year. Much appreciated. Yeah, and, and that Essendon was it a fiftieth that Essendon cake you posted the last one? Was sixtieth? Fiftieth? Yeah. It really is unbelievable. Like, you think you might be able to do it, put a bit of icing on a cake. This looks like this was an absolute work of art, so you oh, won't nice. be disappointed. That's very No, it's amazing. Stuff. Amazing. So, anyway, that's our sponsor, Something About Cake. Check it out. Um, thanks to everyone that listened, and we'll see you on the podcast on Monday. Great to be back. See you guys. See you guys. <laughs>
socials, head down, I had a crack Like a train coming up, put him on his back In the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the G I lost my shit, I smashed that prick I keep Brad Sewell's face in Caught his shoulder, caught his head Caught him flush, I thought that prick was dead Hawks were howling, made no sense All my bombers rushed to my defense In the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the G I lost my shit, I smashed that prick I keep Brad Sewell's face in Got some medical advice Had to spend three months with jaw in ice I saw his head down, I had a crack Like a train coming, I put him on his back In the middle, in the middle, in the middle of the G I lost my shit, I smashed that prick I keep Brad Sewell's face in Convulsed like he was a no D ring I keep Brad Sewell's face in He must have thought he was dying I keep Brad Sewell's face in Campbell thought I was sniping I keep Brad Sewell's face in